Right, so it's weird. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. It's weirdness that you're interested in. See, I thought that you were actually interested in sort of learning that interesting well, sort of stuff. But if it's weird, it helps. <laughs> if it's I, weird, it helps. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be major news. The other day there was something about uh, this this fella who I think he wanted to be an actor, mm -hmm. right? And uh, he was trying all his life to be an actor. Couldn't get a gig anywhere, right? So when he died, he said, right, I'm going to leave all my money to the theatre as long as that theatre uses my skull in that in that play they do with the head. Hamlet. In Hamlet. So that's that sort of news, and what? it's weird. Right. What money did he have if he'd been struggling actor? <laughs> he, had, he had some money in that. What did he do? I don't know. Oh, that's matter. what I'm interested in, what he did. Yeah, no, that's what me and Steve... matter, yeah, and that's what me and Steve are interested in, what he did, how he earned his money. So, because yeah, you, yeah. you were going to educate us this week with some interesting facts. Oh, yeah, come on then. Is that it, or have you got more? Well, that that's weird. That's, but that's not educational. You didn't give me his name, you didn't give me when, you didn't give me what theatre. No, theater. but also you to take from it, do you know what I mean? If people listen and go, well, I'm a bit like that. It's like, if, if you've got to have, be dead and have your skull on stage, that isn't the job for you. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. If it takes that much, c give it up, do something else. Right? What? Uh, what else have I taught you? I don't know. You haven't taught us, you've, uh, you've never taught me anything. See, I still think there's something in the spending money in areas that it's not needed. What like, you the, well, you know, the fella, if you haven't, you know, if you've only just tuned in, you've missed a debate about a fella who needs his, his uh, tackle taken off. A debate makes it sound like it was a bit more informed <laughs> than it actually <laughs> yeah. was. Well, and I'm just, you know, all that time, that was probably half an hour ago, and I've, I've still been thinking about other things that it would be good if more money could be ploughed into things to, to get them out there. Like what? Do you know what I mean? Well, I was, I was looking, you know, I'm a fan of going on the web and that. Sure. And, um, there's inventions, right? We were mm. talking about a few weeks ago, inventions that, that are out yeah. there and there's some that, you know, are, are well known by famous people who have brought yeah. stuff out. Do you, do, you know, do you know why we didn't go on with this? Because I remember saying to you about Einstein, who was, 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 thinks clever, you weren't impressed with it, I said, Einstein, and you went, this is a quote, you went, Einstein, well, yeah. Now, I've never needed, you got it wrong, you went, I've, I've never needed MC squared in my life, <laughs> but the fella who made the video recorder, I watch one a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Brilliant. And, and it's the fact that everybody's got one good idea in them, yeah. right? Like Newton said about the, the apple. I did rock busters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, and there was this thing. There was this thing that was on the website. So they right? shouldn't be spending money on investigating um, sort of medical procedures that might help people. They yeah, should be spending it on what, Carl? I, well, I found this thing, right, Ricky? Brilliant. Yeah. Um, what it was? Little sort of mops. <laughs> what? Little, little mops, like little mop heads, like f floor mops. Yeah. Right. Fit them on your cat feet. If you've got a cat, <laughs> right? If you've got a little cat, yeah. Put put these little things on the on the feet. And there was a picture of one, just like walking around the kitchen, like that, looking a bit like that. Nick, right? You can't do looking like that yeah. on the radio. No, but it's just just looking a bit sort of fed up. But he didn't really know what was going on. Walking around, you see like the 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 woman of the house <laughs> sat in the background having a cup of tea. Yeah. The cat's there walking about on the on the kitchen lino, mopping the floor. <laughs> That's what I put my money into. <laughs> ah! Can we get shares in this? No, <laughs> that's an invention. How good is that? Yeah. Can we get shares in that? It's good though, isn't it? I'll I tell you what, I'll market that. If, if so, I, I, I'll, yeah. That's amazing. I just like the idea of people struggling with their cat <laughs> to get- uh, Hold on though, wait but a minute. Then, what, say, what if I had a bad kidney? Ah, well then it's worth paying five grand. I suppose a year, because it would cost Cause it cleaner, that, wouldn't it? Yeah. So that's, that's what I'm saying. I mean, there's loads of other things out there that gets loads of Of course! Praise. You can stick a brush in its head and make it go down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be genius, Carl. No, but there's loads- there's... <laughs> You see, you say that, if Newton came up with it, you'd be loving it. And there'd be loads of them out there. And everything, right? That's what Imagine annoys me. Imagine Newton coming up with that. Imagine Newton coming up with that, Carl. Think of it. Well, 
There's other things that gets loads of praise. Penicillin. Everyone- who, who came up with that? Who uh, came up with that? Fleming, was it? Yeah, so discovered it on a- Right, I'm- I'm thirty. Don't yeah. think I've ever used it. <laughs> but you're a fen and benalin. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming up, right. Carl. Let's put it behind us. Okay. Let's draw a line under it. Um, we had a meeting yesterday. We thought we better- you know, for the last few shows, plan it a little bit. Mm. And me and Steve came up with a great idea. We're gonna offer Carl money to do stuff. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's the quality of the ideas on this. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, I've brought some money in, a lot of little stuff, because we had him- we had him showering with our mate Johnny for a thousand pounds yesterday, Yeah, we, we just got into a discussion and then one of us suggested that how much would it cost us to pay you, Carl, to have a shower with another man? Not- and there's nothing gonna, going you don't, on. No, no, there's nothing going on. You just- you're just in a shower, a normal shower, you're just watching e washing each other, having- uh, no, not each other, just yourselves. Yeah. You're just, you're just having a chat. Yeah, right, watching you go, yourselves, yeah. having a shower. Yeah. But and it's it a regular went, shower in a, in a regular yeah. house. It's not a shower in and a he, swimming and pool. And he went fine. He got we got he got a thousand pounds out of it. He wouldn't do nine hundred. He got a thousand pounds out of it. But then we said, and we'll have to watch to make sure you do it. Yeah. And he went, no, that's weird. So, but what, why? What's the, I mean, this is what annoys me though, right? The whole idea of, oh, what would you do, right? So I bet you missed out there. When what? we started this chat saying, oh, I wonder what you'd do for money, it did start off with, would you rub Dale Winton's neck? <laughs> would you give Dale Winton a massage for 20 <laughs> quid? No, we, but we, yeah, but it's you have to say no, 500. You could, you got, we're trying to find out what your price is. What price, Carl, is the name of the show. So, so you'd, would you give, um, uh, uh, uh Dad just a, he's got a knot, he's got a bit of a knot, he's stressed, he's been doing supermarket sweep, and he's furious, one of the contestants was answering back, calling him names, and he's got, he's got all knots in his neck. You just put your, th just give him a little bit of a, you know, five minutes. <laughs> a little neck massage. How much would you do that for? He's naked and it's just a little neck massage. Nothing, there's nothing going on. It's like so you you're go. naked as well, naked. but it's I'm just a two of you naked up giving him a little massage. No, no, seriously. Uh, would you would you give him? Um, okay, would you would you give me a foot massage? For how much? Well, that's well, that's, that's what's so your that's price. And what are the rules though? Can I wear gloves? No, no, no. Just just, just uh, you know. Let's start off simple. Would you take off my shoes and socks? Uh, for for I'd do it for like. Fifty quid. There's, you've got okay, that's okay. No, no, twenty quid to take off one mm. shoe and one sock, but like you mean it. You just take the shoe off. You go, uh, and as you're putting down my sock, you pull the sock down slowly. You look me in the eyes and go, "What lovely ankles!" <laughs> Seriously, how uh, much? Uh, what price? Uh, twenty quid a foot. Twenty quid a foot. That's got to so, be worth it. So twenty quid, you will take off my. Um, we put on some soft music, <laughs> right? <laughs> Do, 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 no, I, don't, I don't need it today. That's that's what I was saying to you yesterday. You always do you know it. what I mean? No, you, you don't. At the moment, I'm cash. quite happy. Give it to a homeless person. Give it to a charity. Well, Donate we'll get it to him charity. in here. Well, wait, wait, are you still going to shower with Johnny for a thousand pounds? Not now, because you said, and me and Steve are just going to stand in the corner and, and watch. Well, we've got to make sure you do it. You might go in there and just like wet your hair and come out, pay Johnny five hundred quid, and go. Yeah, we had a shower. How will we know? Sorry, I'm quite interested about the shoe and sock. <laughs> I'm, I'm back to the- I'm back to the shower. You just have to wash yourselves and we have to inspect that it's really clean because we want you to wash certain parts really- Right, well wh why have you both got to be in there then? Well no, because one of us. Can we just take- I mean, we, yeah. Or, or can, can Steve film it? <laughs> <laughs> as, as evidence. Just as evidence. Or we'll leave- I'll tell you what, we'll leave the TV camera in there. We neither of us to be in there, then we can just watch the video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are, are you a couple well, of I shouldn't benders? Be, I shouldn't are <laughs> you a couple of benders? No. <laughs> No. But can we can we discuss further the uh, taking of the shoe and the sock? Because oh. I think there's twenty pounds. I'm willing to pay twenty pounds to see that. There's so many people listening. You Brilliant. Wanna... And we've still got Carl to take off my sock for twenty quid. Okay, let's do it now. Let's just get it over with and do it now. Come on, Carl. Let's get our cash out then. Rick. There's ten pounds right no, there. No, 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 no. You don't owe him because he owes you ten. So I just have to pay him ten. Okay. Yeah. So go on then. Just not, take. Not whilst Coldplay are here. <laughs> <laughs> Right, they've, they've had to shoot off. <laughs> Come well, on. I don't want to do it. Let's why not? It, Tell me what- we've been what... on now for half an hour. Okay, well, okay, well, at the end of this, why won't you do it? It's ridiculous. You won't have a shower, you won't take my shoes and socks off, you won't do anything. You won't get, give Dale wouldn't a rub down. What will you do, for Christ's sake? I don't want to- I don't want to do it. Say if my mum and dad are, are, are like, I've heard about how well I'm doing in London. Yeah. Right? They've heard about, you know, the Sony Awards and that. They're yeah. talking to the mates, they're saying Carl's doing well for himself. Yeah. Let's have a listen to him on Sky. Yeah. They're tuning in, I'm taking off socks for money. <laughs> <laughs> 
did that! That'll be the first time that anyone in your family has actually made, you know, money without stealing, thieving, yeah. it's or committing some kind of atrocity. Well, let's just do it quick then, because it's getting on my nerves. It's actually annoying me. Excellent. Excellent, alright. Well, you... No, no, you... Well, he's just taking a tenner off me. Right, okay. Okay. Then do it like that. You've got to do it properly. You've got to do it slowly. You've got to do it properly. Right, just gently. I can't see what's happening. Just pretend I'm working on a shop. There's nothing normal. No, come on, just get it done. What's that? What's whistling? What's the whistling? Right. Okay, now do it properly, gently. Yes. <laughs> it's a sweaty trainer, which just makes no, it all the more. Just right. gently caress it, caress it. There's someone watching in the office. Caress it there. Don't just right. gently ease the shop. Just like working in a shoe shop. There's nothing. Nothing weird about it. Just gently yeah, ease it off. I'm gonna burst. Right. I'm gonna burst. All yes. right, now it's just. Right, no, just gently come on, stop. gently do it. Don't just, just rip it off. Down, yeah. Yeah. Slowly, what? slowly what tease it. Tease it. I don't like this. I just wasted a tenner and that wasn't enjoyable. Now, now wait a minute. You've got to say. <laughs> so you've got say to say something nice about my ankle. Say so you've got lovely toes and I love your ankle. You got nice toes and that. <laughs> well, say it properly. I don't like it anymore. Do it, and you've got right. to say. You've got no. to. You've got to say for the tenner. Otherwise, oh, you're taking it back. You've God. got to say what lovely ankles you've got, but in a sweet, seductive voice. Right. <laughs> Right, you got nice ankles. <laughs> that is not how you would seduce would a woman. Like you would not seduce a woman like that, Carl. Oh, I don't. Know. <laughs> Suzanne, I don't. <laughs> imagine that. I don't know. I don't feel good about Leave it. Leave it off, because I want to see if we can get him to massage your toes. <laughs> See, I don't know what's worse. I, d I mean, I didn't like the feeling much. That wasn't very nice because it was all, it was all rough. And I, I, you know, and he's a, he's a skinhead and he's playing on the feet. And then I thought, oh, I've degraded him. So I don't know what I feel worse about. I'll g you can keep the tenor that you owe me if you massage his toes. No, I'm not doing that. No, no we paid him. He's done it. Yeah, the, the shoes are back on. We're with some else next week. <laughs> some else next week. Okay. So, if you'd like to Carl to humiliate himself for money, email in. Well, Suzanne was surprised that I was like, last night I told her about it and I said- oh, Why did you do that? I don't feel- I don't know what I feel now. I, that's not good. I don't know, that's not good, is it? And she just said, well, you know, uh, you don't like <laughs> chucking money away and that. And it was funny because we got talking about, uh, when- when we bought our first flat in Manchester, right? Uh, <laughs> I thought- I, I bought a bed, right, I didn't have much money, and uh, what annoyed me is, I bought the bed and it turned up, and I said, where's the mattress? And they said, well, you don't get, you don't get a mattress with the bed, you've got to buy that separately. And I was like, well, that's not a bed then, <laughs> right? So I didn't have any more money, Suzanne's at work, so I thought, well, I don't want to stress her out at work and that, mm. telling her we haven't got a mattress for the bed. I had a word with my dad, right, he knew a mate who had one in the back of a van, right, he said, I'll have a word with him, he'll let you have it. Got the van, brought it round, stunk a diesel and that, but I thought, well, it's, it's free, <laughs> it'll do. Yeah. They brought it up, I stuck it in the spare room, <laughs> Suzanne got home, she looked at the bed, she said, that looks alright, she wears the mattress, so it's in the next, next room, but I thought I won't tell her because sure. she won't like the idea. She went in, just the room stunk of like petrol fumes <laughs> and that, yeah. she said, what, what's going on? <laughs> I said, well, it's, a mattress didn't come with the bed. So I've sorted you one out, I've got this off my dad, mm. and we didn't have one night on it. She said, get rid of it. Yeah. I had to go and ditch it. I don't know what she was thinking. <laughs> one of your father's friends is driving around in a van with a mattress in the back. Yeah. Was he a serial killer? <laughs> I mean, and she <laughs> didn't want to sleep on it. Let's have some silence the lamb. What kind of a cheapskate is she? What kind of a woman is she? That she won't sleep on a mattress that has been in the back of a transit van. That's yeah, because it's like you know, covered in Petrol, diesel, probably urine, and Christ <laughs> knows what else. Yeah. Oh. So, you know. Would you swap pants with Steve for 50 quid now? You'd have to look at him, you go in the toilet, he, ta he takes his pants off in the toilet, leaves him there, you go in, <laughs> right, you come out with your trousers on, you go in, right, take your pants off, put his pants on, leave your pants in the toilet, come out, you got his pants on, he goes in there, you come out and you swap pants. At the end of the show, you put it back. How much? When you say pants, what do you mean? Just Jeans. underpants. Underpants. No, I'm not doing underpants. Why? Why not? Seriously, these were fresh on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, but, but for I the mean, BAFTAs, for the uh, awards, the Sony. Do you know what I mean? But I mean, we're just name your price. It's gonna be more than twenty quid. It's gonna be more than twenty quid. It's gonna be. It's gonna be like eighty quid upwards, I think. No, clean on today. They yeah. were clean on today in their boxes. It's as bad for him as you. Don't, don't remember that. Thanks for that. Fifty quid. Really? Play record. No, hang on, you just said you'll give me 50 quid. 
if you go and swap pants. I don't know what's in it for me, I don't know why I'm doing this. It started off as torturing Carl, but not only am I out of pocket, I don't actually want you two to swap pants or touch my ankles. Well, Steve isn't I don't know what no. I've done. This is, I, 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 I'm, I'm the victim here. I've paid out and I don't even like it. Play a record, I want to think about this. Well, when was the last time you went to a live experience? Uh. Well, I've, I've been to gigs, but the one that springs to mind probably is when I first sort of tried a gig out, and it wasn't a music one, it was, um, it was Bottom, do you know, with- <laughs> uh, Bottom, what, Bottom the Live thing with- With Rick Mail and Edwin Yeah, in Manchester. When was that? Years ago, cos it was, it was in, in Manchester in about, I don't know, 87, 88 or something, and, uh, I was set up for a, for like a blind date. Right, this, uh, a mate of mine sort of set me up to see this, see this What, girl. so you said, let's go to bottom? Well, I didn't tell her, I just said, meet us at the Apollo. Uh, I bet she was over the moon, wasn't she? Met her there, said, right. There Romantic? Go. Going to see some middle-aged men run round in pants. Brilliant. Well, it, it, it's good, it's one of the things that afterwards you've got something to talk about, haven't you? And stuff. Yeah. So and was, like, uh, was it a good gig? Yeah, it was alright. Uh, sort of bought some... Bought some April fruits and that at the start of the night. Yeah. Uh, I think she liked that. And then we watched Bottom. Then afterwards had a bit of a chat. And then, uh... You didn't see her again, I take it? I would have done right, because she was alright looking and everything. Yeah. But when we were, when we were chatting, she said, uh... She had a, a problem with a marrow. Marrow what? and that. <laughs> she what? She had a problem with a marrow. She had a problem with her marrow? Yeah. Uh, you mean her bone marrow? Yeah. Oh! I thought you meant she had one stuck of her fanny. No, just, just the- <laughs> Thanks for that, Rick. That's an image I can't get out of my head. <laughs> no, when did what? Oh, I see. A marrow. I think a marrow. A marrow. Her marrow. And is, is that serious, that? You well, see, I just was put off it, cos I thought- if you Well, it's, I, I think it's more serious than a problem with a marrow. Yeah. I with mean- a With a marrow. With a marrow and that. <laughs> it's an idea if you're bored with butt I love it! It's- I love it! Everything he says! It's like someone from Kez. It was just that thing that- You didn't want to go out with a girl who might be ill in some way. Well, yeah, I thought, what's the point in spending time with her, spending money on her and stuff, and then she's gonna die on me. Oh! Right? No, 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 but seriously. God! No, but I'm just- but, see, this is what annoys me. Oh. You asked me to be honest, but oh. I'm just saying, what's the point in me getting upset and stuff? Oh, no, but it's not the- it was the- one thing is then, what's the point in spending money on her if she's gonna die anyway? Do you gotta realise that's no, no. not a normal thing to say? No, but what's the point in getting to really like, to know, you know, knowing someone and thinking, oh, that she's really nice, I want to spend my life with her. It's good that she told me when she did. Oh, Carl! Oh, what, during bottom? <laughs> <laughs> I got- this is the most amazing thing you've ever said! What Steve, do you... don't you- don't you understand what I'm saying? But no, because- what? Well, firstly, it's the assumption that she's going to drop dead, and well, you're going to think, "Well, I'm not a doctor. Some open I'm not a doctor I don't know what 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 it means when you've got a problem with a marrow and that." But she looked pretty serious when she was talking about it, so I was like, "Oh, <laughs> Christ Almighty!" Oh, I don't God. understand what's so bad about that. Play record. I will tell you. I'll explain to her during the break. You could try to banish to room 101 all those things that you dislike. Never, they're never to be seen again. Will you please welcome Carl Pilkington? All right. Who? How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Carl. So, what's your first? What does this represent? And imagine me putting some on a right. on a table next to you. Go on. Right. Well, first of all, right, it's dead hard to come up with like five things that drive you up the wall. Okay. Right. It's not easy because there's so many things. Yeah. But it's just like you know, picking five. It's like someone saying, pick your five favorite records or five favorite films. Yeah. So it's hard. So. You know in Desert Island Discs where they- you can, you always get the complete works of Shakespeare in the Bible? Yeah. I think you should include Ricky Gervais. I think you should always be there, already <laughs> in Room 101. They don't have to nominate you. <laughs> you all- you always go in. <laughs> <laughs> go on then, go on then. Right. So, so don't bother putting him in. Don't bother putting Ricky in, Carl. He's already yeah, there. He's already, I'm already there, waiting. Yeah. Go on then. <laughs> right. Yeah. First of all, right, I thought- I thought of like, uh, things that we've done in the past. Sure. And like, quotes and that, that you yeah. were talking about. Yeah. That, that, that quote that people say that, uh, you know, money doesn't make you happy. Yeah. Right, we're just, we're just rattling through some here. Yeah. That, that annoys me. What? Money well, the quote, doesn't money doesn't make you happy? Yeah, cos it does, it clearly does. <laughs> 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 right. Without it, life's pretty dull, isn't it? 
Yeah, good. All right, so, okay. So that's like a little short, short thing, and and huh. you know, then then that sort of makes you think about people with money. There was yeah. a program on in the week. I don't know if you saw it, Steve. The the one a uh, posh load. That was brilliant, wasn't it? That was a great show. So annoying. Oh yeah. There was a girl on there, right? Who's from a from a rich family and that, and uh, you know, it's not her fault. She's from a rich family. No. It's like how posh people annoy people. That doesn't annoy me because the way I sound is because of where I'm brought up and that. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if you if you sound posh, you sound posh. It's, yeah. You know, it doesn't change who's a person or whatever. Yeah, yeah. it's quite. But true. this girl, right? Um, did you see it, Steve? I did. You didn't see it, did you, Ricky? Know. Right. This girl goes shopping. She buys like four t-shirts and a crappy little handbag. Yeah. Spends about thirteen hundred quid, and she's just wasting it. Going, you know, the woman's saying, uh, "Oh, you'll love these. You know, they're really in fashion." She says, "Oh, whatever. I'll probably only wear them once anyway." And it's just that sort of thing annoys me. Yeah. You know, people with money, you know, who have grafted for it, are good, but like, um, you know, people who who just get money given to them from the rich parents trying to make the world. There was another point, right, where she's in a shoe shop, right, and um, she. She's like got these big boots and stuff, <laughs> uh, but part of the problem is, right? She's quite odd looking in that, right? <laughs> but she's got a lot of money, so she makes herself look half decent. Yeah. <laughs> problem is, she's got fat ankles. She's got what? Fat <laughs> ankles. Right. And they drive her up the wall because no matter. I mean, it's one of them things, isn't it? It's almost like God has gone. Yeah, you can have all the toffees and stuff you want. You can have like your nice t-shirts, but at the end of the day, love, you're stuck with these ankles, and you can see. <laughs> Dear God, say yeah. right. You can have all the toffees you want, yeah, and you have nice handbags and that, but you're stuck with these ankles. Oh God! And, and I really wanted to get a job in that shoe shop where she was going in, blowing her dad's money, and she was calling up her dad, saying, "Oh, Daddy, is it all right if I, you know, I'm just out shopping? I, I've just bought some shoes that that have cost like a grand, mm. and I really wanted a, a job in that shoe shop." Just so I could sit there, and when she comes in, you go, "Oh, hello, love, whatever her name is. Lovely to see you here again." Got some lovely new shoes in. Got look at these nice new boots. Everyone's wearing them. Victoria Beckham, and you know all the it girls are wearing them. Yeah, try them on. Oh, you can't because your ankles are so fat. You can't get into these. <laughs> Never mind. Here's some boots. <laughs> <laughs> she really annoyed me, and I'm not a nasty person. You're but not. She she brought it out of me. Oh, oh I'm worried though. This idea of you getting a job in a shoe shop. I'm I not know. sure you're qualified. Well, <laughs> I like the, all the, the that's way round it. That yeah. some people go, oh, I'd like her to lose all her money or something. He'd like to actually bother yeah. go through getting the job in the shop, yeah, and then just wait in there. You'd be too busy mucking around outside like, on some kind of trolley stuck in a little lake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but interestingly in that show, I was watching that show, and at one point, um, you mentioned that her fat heels, or her fat ankles. Yeah. Um, her, her, she said, I'd like to do, I'd like to have various changes to my body, I know, plastic surgery, I'd like to do this to my face, and da 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 And, uh, her mum's there, and her mum's going, no, don't be so, that's how, no, you're my daughter, you're beautiful, da 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 No, you shouldn't, I'm not gonna let you have those, da da She went, I'd love to have an operation on my fat ankles. Her mum went, yeah, I do agree with that. <laughs> 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 oh, how bad can fat ankles be? I know. What were these ankles like? Well, tell us, Rick. You must know. No, <laughs> no they, do you know what I mean? They no. were like if you said to a little kid, to a four-year-old kid, draw a person. That's they draw her legs. Do you know where there's no sort of thin bit, and then it comes out a bit for your knees? Oh yeah, and they're just ankles. It was just like two logs. People going to say, "I like your new flares." What do you mean flares? <laughs> they're leggings. <laughs> Cheeky, <laughs> awful. So. What do you make of the fact that Mariah Carey's thirty-eight million pound payoff has cost EMI staff uh, their jobs, and we're talking one thousand eight hundred EMI staff who have lost their jobs? What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, is that silly money, Mariah Carey, on thirty-eight million? She doesn't need that much. She doesn't need that much. <laughs> she but has to dress nice, though. It's not her fault. I'd say um, <laughs> it's bad business. Okay. Because uh, EMI, did you say? Yes. Right. They've got rid of them them staff. Yeah. Mariah Carey's left. Who's going to do the work? <laughs> <laughs> you think, do you think Mariah should come back and do some temping? Well, they should have. They should have got a loan and paid her. Okay. Do you know what I mean, vicious circle that. <laughs> right. Have you have you done? You've done a business degree, or anything, have you? Commerce. You did commerce. Yeah. What, where, where did you do that? What did you do with that? At school. I'd, I'd learn how to fill out a check, <laughs> pay a bill, and uh, I think I, I had a trip round Kellogg's. <laughs> Did you, uh, did you get, uh, did you get an O level or GCSE? Uh, we know he didn't. You know. Uh, but was, uh, was there a commerce exam or was it just a division of maths? Remember. What did he fill out a check? It was a subset of maths. It was an option, it was like, if you want to do it, you can <laughs> What do. was it? Fill, fill out, out a check, check pay, a pay a bill, pay a bill, 
Have a visit right in Kellogg's. I down Kellogg's and I saw my sister's boyfriend there at the time. He sorted me out with some variety packs. Really? <laughs> what was in them? You know, Rice Krispies and... <laughs> Good stuff. Cocoa Pops? Space dust or whatever it is. Space dust! <laughs> so, sorry, that wasn't Ken Dodd, though. No. <laughs> that was someone else, wasn't it? That was an aunt. <laughs> that was, yeah. yeah. That wasn't Special K. Oh, dear. What about this, then? Home Secretary David Blunkett admits that muggers rule some streets. Um, weird, this. Because when I was out with you... I don't was... believe it's going to be weird, whatever you say, no, Carl. No, when we, when we were in that pub that night and we got talking about muggers and that, the tip is, um, what I tend to do, because I nearly got mugged once, act mental. You what? You nearly got mugged once? I nearly got mugged. Yeah. But I, but I tried this technique <laughs> of acting a bit mental. <laughs> right, and how did you act mental? Well, this guy wanted me trainers. And uh, I was in Piccadilly Gardens in Manchester, it was quite late one night, mm -hmm. and he came up and said, uh, I want them trainers. I said, you want them? I said, I worked hard for these. I said, how dare you come to me asking? And I, I got a bit livid. And I <laughs> he, looked at, he looked at me like, oh my God, he's got a right one here. And he left me. Were you acting mental or were you just mental? No, I, I put it on a bit. Were you not tetri petrified though? Well, you don't think about it, do you, when you're sort of in the eyes of danger? <laughs> well, not you, clearly. You're a brave man. So what did the you say? I, ju I just... I just went. I just went a bit mad. I just kind of because he said he wanted the trainers and they were dear ones at the time. And uh, I just no, you're not having these. So I've crafted. I said I wanted these trainers. Yeah. And you know went on to tell him how I work out printers and I don't enjoy it and you know I put in all these hours and that and I have to cycle home for about five miles and. I, Did he give you his trainers? <laughs> yeah. Did he have a knife? Yeah, or I just left. No, it didn't get that. Didn't get that violent. Well, that's very brave of you, Carl. Yeah, it's that's good. good advice though. Just that mental. Um, uh, see, what's actually tried it the other night? Oh, Liza Minnelli? Yeah. Well, she says, oh, I've worked hard for these diamonds. <laughs> yeah. It's not easy being the daughter of Judy Garland. You don't know what it's like. Uh, finally, uh, apparently um, there was a crook that got a job, a security job at Heathrow. Right, he was a crook and he got a job at Heathrow. Uh, as robbers steal another two million pounds. Apparently security down there is lax. Yeah. Is that a concern for you? Is this another yeah. two million? Yeah. Why Why is all this money at the airport? <laughs> um, it's those sandwich shops. You know how they're really expensive, the sandwiches, in like when you're <coughs> on a plane? They're like £2.50 for tuna, which is ludicrous. Yeah. That's basically the reason. What do you mean, why is all this money at airports? What What is it doing there? Why? Have a go, have a go. No, have a go answering this yourself. Why is anything at an airport? It's going somewhere. Or coming in from somewhere. Yeah, but money, you can sort it out through the bank, like phone banks and that. Have you done commerce? You know a lot about paying bills and writing out checks. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about Kellogg's. What was uh, it like? What, what was in the factory? Was it just like squashing bits of corn? It's and pretty boring, really. Just loads of conveyor belts, um, yeah. boxes of cornflakes everywhere, just what you imagine. Yeah. I so was it more, this is where you it. might be working? <laughs> this is where you're likely to work. Possibly. If you leave there was two trips. There was that and the trip to Manchester Evening News. Okay. And I, I left that early because I had a job in um, Cordon Bleu. In Kellogg's. <laughs> Cordon uh, Bleu, what's that? It's is like that... a supermarket. Yeah? And I, I had to leave the trip early and the teacher went mad saying uh, they thought I'd got lost on the, you know, in the building and stuff. What, you didn't tell anyone? Or... No, because I w it was like day two of working in this supermarket and I couldn't be late. I thought by the time I explain where I've got to go and everything, it'll, I'll be even later. Sure. So I just left, and then apparently they were searching the building and everything for me. Oh, you know, were Stuck in a printer. Um, <laughs> don't know. Stuck in a printer! I don't know. About. What was the printer's name? <laughs> <laughs> you worked at a supermarket called Cordon Bleu. Yeah. Cordon that Bleu! Brilliant. That's brilliant. That's great, isn't it? It's rubbish. Oh. I got sacked. You had to what, what did you get sacked for? Messing about in a, um, the, back in the, in the car park around the back. Yeah. Uh, it was, there was a grid. And uh, all the concrete had gone funny, so when it rains, you got like a big lake. Oh yeah! Right, and I got in. Do you know those big metal trolleys you get to like put all the food in while she's Oh out? yeah! And yeah. I got in one of them and pushed myself out into this lake of cement. No, of I, water. It was full oh, of was water. water right, it had been right, raining, right, right. and I got stuck in the middle. Right, and the boss was like, "Where's Where's Carl? He's meant to be doing, you know, facing up the beans." And I was like, <laughs> and "You were so, stranded in a lake." So someone said, "Oh, he, like, I saw him messing about out the back." He came out and saw me stuck in the middle of this <laughs> <laughs> lake in, like a, in a trolley. And he said, get back in. I said, Would you say, no, I'm, I'm I said, filming sharks. I said, I'm, I'm, it's too deep. I can't get out. You'll have to pass me something. And he said, I'm not passing you nothing. He said, you can get out of there and walk through it. I said, I'm not. I've got my trainers on. 
probably the same ones. Yeah, you've actually. risked your life for them. Yeah. I said, I'm not getting these wet. I said, I said what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to wait for the water to go down the grid. He said, the grid's blocked. Now get out or you're sacked. I said, well, I'm not getting out. He said, right, you're sacked. So, so you were sacked. How long did you have to wait for the water to go down the grid? In the end, I did get bored and I sort of did a bit of a leap and a jump and got one foot wet. Uh, uh, how long were you waiting? Only about half an hour. <laughs> Just think of it. <laughs> Just think. I mean, how did he get himself into that situation? <laughs> That's fantastic. Should we play a record? Oh, definitely. Money for old rope, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't, even, I can't even be bothered. <laughs> yes, you're going to tell me now. Come on, Carl. Well, I mean it. Basically, money for old rope yeah. came from the... T right. What was all that about? He can tell someone's weight. <laughs> what was the that for? Fight. And Blind <laughs> Blessed shitting himself. What are you... What? No, don't you... <laughs> no, tell me that now. You nearly made me swear then. Just, I'm getting really annoyed. <laughs> I'm getting really annoyed now. Tell me this fact, Carl, or I'm going to go mental. <laughs> Come on, Carl. Time's running out. Not that people years ago... When people used to be hung, right? Right. If you didn't like the person who's been hung, you'd go, God, I really don't like him. And, to, and so you never forget the Presumably time. Presumably if they're being hung, we take that as red. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so they never forget afterwards to get the hangman to get the rope and to cut it up into little pieces and he'd sell them. He'd sell the little pieces of the rope to people. And See, that, uh, Carl, that's the most interesting thing, if it's true, that you've come up with. Right. Okay. And so what's what's... You, so they, they sell the rope? They sell the rope, and it's money for old rope. Money for old rope? Meaning, like, you know, God, it's easy to make money, that, that all I have to do is cut it up and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm cynical. <laughs> I'm not so convinced. How did you meet Suzanne? Uh, that was when, uh, I was working with her, and, uh, she gave me 20p for, uh, the hot chocolate machine. She never asked for it back. I thought she's all right. <laughs> Um, I've been there uh, sort of 11 years, so it works. Has she ever given you that, uh, she ever, have you, have never you ever, you've never given that 20 never back? never it back. And did you return the favour, perhaps on the next date? Uh, did you buy her a Kit Kat or something? No, I don't think I did. I think, I think word got out that, um, she liked me and that. And, um, what did I do? I think I did some work for her, I did some editing for her, to sort of show off my skills and that. <laughs> sure. And she was like, oh, you're good at this, aren't you? I was like, yeah. And I think she got us another drink because I was I was doing that editing for her in my own time. So you're up, you're up on the deal, aren't you? Because I, I know now, I know for a fact that you've not spent any money on her in eleven years. So you are you're forty p up <laughs> at least. We um, just thinking back to some of the other highlights of the year. One of mine, Rick. I'm sure one of yours. Live eight. Live eight was great. Fun. So not only was it a great day, but obviously uh, you know, it raised its, it, it made its message uh, very much uh, clear and open to the world. So Did you enjoy uh, live eight, Carl? Uh, yeah, it was all right. It's you know quite a good good thing. I mean, mm. has it has it sorted the problems out or? Well, it's more about raising awareness, isn't it, and bringing that to the world's attention. I'm aware of it, so yeah, it's <laughs> sort of done the job on that. <laughs> yes. well, I, I read something about um, unbelievable. Do you know? Um, but you know, because Live Eight was all about money and stuff on it, giving money. And no, it wasn't really. Well, it was about awareness, but it was about um, the 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 G Eight. Dropping um, the debt, cancelling the debt to the I think the twentieth poorest nations or something, which I think yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, then, then I was reading up on that, and there was something about, you know, Bill Gates? Yeah. Who did, uh, the computer stuff, didn't he? Yeah. I think yeah. he's the wel wel wealthiest, Microsoft. Yeah. wealthiest man in the world or Absolutely. something, Absolutely. The first, I think the first hundred billionaire. Wow. Was he? That is a lot of money. Because they, they worked out, um, uh, they put to him that, um, with his labour, what, what his labour's worth, he would have to drop over six thousand dollars to be bothered to pick it up. Wow. And they asked him, and he said, well, of course I'd pick it up, you know, because yeah. it doesn't work like that. But yes, he's he's that rich. Well, he could just pay someone to do it as well, can he? Okay, get on with it, Carl. You do, again, you've missed the point. <laughs> no, no, I mean, you, no, again, you've missed the point. But, but all I'm saying- Sorry, right? Gracie, in wherever you are, Carl's an idiot and I stand by it. Uh, Bill Gates- And don't rip foxes to pieces. He's got that much money, right? He's saying that he could give everyone in the world, right, six quid, mm -hmm. everybody, right? Am I, just what I was thinking and what I wanted to say to you is see, see what you think, right? Do you think it's fair that everybody gets six quid? Right, why? What's your point? What do you mean? You should mean the poor should get more? Well, well, no, not really. What I mean is, say like if you live in Africa, right? Yeah. You can get a lot more for, say, a quid there than you can in London. <laughs> so what I'm saying is rather than six quid each, yeah. maybe give people in London a tenner each in Africa or whatever. Give them about three quid, three fifty. So you're saying 
give the poorest people less mm. so they can get as much for their money in their Argos. Yeah, basically. You're, you're saying if you were to redistribute wealth, You'd give the poor people slightly less than the rich people because they've got a higher standard of living. <laughs> Gracie, once again, can I come back to you on this? Do you know now why I call me there? Oh, you know what I like about Gracie? She told the truth and she put her name. It's Grace, yeah. actually. She put her name down. Some people, I mean, just say you're a prat and they believe they each other. They just you across the street. Yeah, hey, fat yeah, man, yeah. you're not funny. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I, was, I mean, I rest my case. Carl, you're an idiot. All right. We're here to ask you to donate generously to Comic Relief. Carl, oh, thoughts? Good cause? I don't want to put it down, but... <laughs> no, it's just every year. If I was watching this at home, it's kind of like, here we go again. That's all I'm saying. Right. If you want to give, give. If my dad's watching this at home now, he'll, he'll, he'll go home. It's not tonight, is it? He hates tonight. My mum gets annoyed because the EastEnders isn't on. <laughs> it changes the schedule. I don't like it when I see you know, JLS, sat in a tub of beans, going, call up, makes no difference, I've made my mind up. It annoys me that they're sat in beans, there's people going hungry across the world, they're sat in a, f God knows how many tins that is. It just seems a waste. Right. But you think the cause is a good one? But it's every year. So people, I think people just sort of go, oh, not again. How many times, if you had a mate who kept saying to you, you can't lend us a tenner, could you? Mm. How many times do you go, right, okay, this is the last time. We keep giving you money every year. Right. And each year you come back again with your hand out. How long are we going to keep doing this? Well, that's what you feel about Richard Curtis, who's behind Comic Relief. Well, Richard Curtis, I never see him doing the bad stuff. He's never out there, is he? He gets all his mates to do it. Look at this I've arranged. Meanwhile, he's at home. I've never seen him in the thick of it. <laughs> no. Lenny Emery, he's, he's, he's out there all the time. Yeah. He, you know, he's good. But Curtis, a bit of people at home watching this haven't got a clue about Richard Curtis. And yet he's the one who's going to get the knighthood. Is he? Well, Definitely. Inevitably, yeah. Definitely. I'd love it to mean something these days. I go, wow, well, you've made a knight of the realm. And he goes, oh, brilliant. Uh, and I go, right, here's the suit of armour. Get on that horse. We're fighting the French. Let's see his yeah. face there. Yeah. Straight back onto Lenny Henry again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that Carl's perhaps been a bit negative about Comet Relief. Can you give us your appeal for people to contribute to Comet Relief? I just wish they'd focus on, on one charity. Just one thing, one thing a year. They go, this year, we're going to sort that out. And once we've, once we've raised money for that thing, we're not going to be knocking on your door again saying, we want some more. Okay. That is it. Let's, what, what, what should we do? What charity do you want to solve? Everyone sends the money. Well, just something important. In the paper the other day, they'd, they'd raised money for a pair of slippers for an elephant. <laughs> right, Now, why? I love elephants, yeah. but it annoyed me. This picture there, 500 quid it was for a pair of slippers. Why? Because he doesn't want to stomp around the house in his shoes. He can't say that. <laughs> exactly. Either. You know, and sometimes he wears them over to the newsagent. He shouldn't go out in slippers. I have to choose in the house. Right. And then that's what happens. It will nip out with them on. And next year, <laughs> the elephant needs slippers again. Has and out again. In the street, there's always people. London is a nightmare. Honestly, you'd well, nip the people out. with the clipboard. Yeah, you can't, couldn't avoid them. You cross the road, there's another one there. What am I going to do? I mean, a lot of the time, I think it's harder if you're a woman, a young woman, because the blokes got them things on, Greenpeace or whatever, deafkids.com, and they normally approach young women and they use it as a bit of a chatting up thing. You know, look at me, I'm a good bloke, doing a bit for charity. It's always with a good-looking woman, not like some toad-looking woman. <laughs> it's, always, it's always a good looker. Now, why is that? There's no evidence that says a good-looking woman's got more money. If you're watching this and you haven't been stopped regularly to give charity, you probably look like a toad. Mm. Red Cross, they've got more out of me. They keep calling up now they've got my number. Whenever there's a problem in the world, it's never, that phone isn't for me anymore. It's no use for me. It's just like the, the, the sort of Mother Teresa line. She's dead. Who else can help us? Well, we've got Carl's number. Give him a call. He's got a few quid. Honestly, that's how it seems every time. But I've told you, you know, help the aged. You sign up, you give them your bank details. You're going to be looking after Edna. And they give you a little picture of Edna. She's sat there with one of those sort of pennies on. Uh, it tells you what it's going towards. Pay you £10. That will go towards keeping Edna warm, right? Get another pack about a month later. Open it up. There's Edna. She's got a tan. <laughs> so that's what they're doing with the money. Not just keeping her warm, pop, popping the gas on. Sending her away on holiday. If they sent me a letter saying Edna's going on holiday, I'm, oh, I'm not putting money towards that. I'm, I'm, I'm paying for a gas bill. And that's what puts you off, Charity. The more you find out, the more you sort of turn against it. So you're saying it could, could be a con? Well, you do have to be careful with a lot of charities. Yeah, I'm sure this one's legit and 
the money's going to the right places, but you never know. Now, I understand the cynicism. It's a drop in the ocean. It doesn't solve anything. It's people showing off on telly, right, trying to get a bit of kudos, whatever, right? But what is nice is the, the ordinary people who do give so generously, and they're moved, and they might not have a lot of money themselves. Even people on welfare benefit, they're on the dole, or they haven't worked, they hand over a fiver to someone. Isn't that, isn't that heartwarming? People on the dole hand over money? Yeah. Well, that's easy. That's not their money to give away, oh, is it? No, it is. You give me some of your money, I'll give it away. That's easy. It's when you've been working all week. Got a boss moaning in your ear. Quick, we've got to get this done. Can I have a holiday? No, you can't. We've got a deadline to meet. But I've booked holiday now. My wife wants to go away. We've got a big order on plumbing supplies. What's the order coming in? It's a big order from abroad. We what need do they want? Extra U-bends. Oh, come on. How many U-bends no, do we need? No, we need to get it done. But it's Friday. Get to work. Right? Now, you need a holiday more than anyone. Mm. If they're on the dole, they're, they're not stressed out. It's not their money. I, I can give money away that isn't mine. Carl, what do you make of Comic Relief Night itself? Do you, do you watch? Do you, do, does it make you laugh? I just feel like it goes on too long. Mm. You know, and they keep saying, this is the figure, you know, we're after. Let's beat last year's. Well, let, no, let's not. Let's not beat last year's. Okay. Because then next year you'll want even more. I said, let's have a bit of a lull. An all-time low this year. Let's try and do that. So next year it's easier to crack. I've always thought that. It's, it's tricky, this, because it does look like I'm having a go. No. All I'm saying is, if you haven't got that much money... The money you have got, you spend wisely. Mm. Over in Africa, you've got the all-time high, 50 million. Well, let's, let's go mental. No, let's not go mental. Just give them a few million, see how they get on. Right. Give generously, but not too generously, because tonight we want an all-time low. <laughs> so, I'm growing up on this estate, and there was, a, there was this woman about four houses down, right? It was a bit rough, <laughs> all right? Didn't fancy her. Oh, God, no. Right, but she had a Why? baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why was she? It was a very. So, like, being a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What but, does she look like? But anyone can Tattoos? Cl clean up. Tattoos? Look like they, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which, even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try well, and make the place look nice. Yeah. Right? But she didn't. And a kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, 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 Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? When they get it, a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> must have gone. Have you seen a horse in it? No. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of leather? <laughs> yeah. And, um, oh, that's great. I Did Big out. Jake come <laughs> looking <laughs> for it? I, I, I'd been out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, so let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or after. <laughs> 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 Where'd he get a horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? He's going to say, Where'd you get that from? I bought it. All right then. But we'll keep it out of the kitchen. <laughs> I don't want you going Catlin rustling. <laughs> oh, Where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just... And how long did he have it for? Until... Was he leading it or riding it? Mum, open the door, I can't stop! <laughs> I can't stop it! Open the patio door as well, I mean... Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think... He you know, had a horse? Yeah, right, so... That's I, why the family didn't have any money, they'd spend it on the horse. No, exactly. I don't think, that's what I'm saying, I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway... Yeah, it's so, wise to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and They it's could not, be in the room next door. It's not buying it, it's keeping it as well. Oh, but, so, I, so I was like in the car with my dad coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round, and, yeah. uh, and you know, sort of go back to uh, to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, <laughs> yeah. And uh, the horse was in the lounge, <laughs> reading a paper, just just like walking around. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! This what? And when I when I was doing, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in in plastic cups. What? This right. is genius. <laughs> it just keeps coming. What do you mean you're trying to flog little flowers? What do you mean? <laughs> well, wait, 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 wait. Let's play a record. Let's play a record and come back to this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Just unravel and unravel. It's going to go for hours. Let's play a track, deeper and deeper. It's like an onion, isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the land. I come from the West Country. I've never heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and it's got a rediffusion telly and this horse going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is real. I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that lined up. Oh.
Great track. So, we were talking, uh, we were doing White Van Man, and, uh, we got onto, uh, um, We got onto genetically, uh, genetically modified babies, but and then somehow- And Carl started telling a story about someone with a horse, and then he got onto, he was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers briefly. Well, hang on, I just want to recap slightly. So, there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was- Cause you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so, the, the yeah. mother, the mother was a right- Pig, apparently. Well, look, I don't know if that's relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but, you, but well, what I'm trying to do is, like, make a picture for you so you understand. What does what she what look a picture like? Who did she look like? Um, bit of a, and no disrespect to her, bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah. I knew it was gonna be Pauline. Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? I never got that close to her. Okay, alright. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse? Yeah, from I don't know where there was a, I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they they kept the horse in the house with. Them. They kept it in the house. Did but they, they didn't get have caught? it for long? No. So and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse. No, in what there. happened was I was. Um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? For some local charity, and they said you can do anything to to raise money, and they came out with all these ideas, and I thought that's good. What was the charity? But forget. Well, I don't know. I thought forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good money making over So <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me mum for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings off them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups. And, uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it, selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Did you sell any? Yeah, so loads. So they w did you just cut- you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they want to survive. <sighs> but I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, cos I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. Cos it's a bit rough. So, as I went- The up, horse went, thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> so they've they, they been feeding me kitty cat. <laughs> yeah. So I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet, <laughs> yeah, a horse in the living room. <laughs> you know, we've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. That beauty like, was on. Yeah, <laughs> well, think, yeah. <laughs> well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay, or in like a house with a central you know, heating, three-piece suite, and sure. a telly and that. <laughs> <laughs> telly and that. Because, no, but I was saying this the other day. And an Atari, right? <laughs> I was walking through London. Come on, sixty-four, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know, like homeless people, always have dogs. And yeah. she said, "Oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it." And I said, "They've got that dog is happier than most dogs, right? Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open. It's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat. I mean? But other than that, <laughs> no, it does eat. Though they're always all right. So that's what I was saying. I think this horse. Was was doing all right for yeah. itself. Do you know that, I mean? Well, not many horses have got their own house. Exactly. For a start, yeah. But anyway, that's that's what, that's what by the by. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this family, who's a bit. What we were talking about? It was about cloning. genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right now, what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, right? Mm -hmm. And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. It so, could happen, Rick. <laughs> So come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, and I don't know what they do. They, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah, and uh, get a little baby, and there it is. It looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate. You both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right yeah. now, you look at Ste Stephen. This is you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well. You give it good food and all the good dad. all the vitamins and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right. So then it changes its looks. It goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family had a horse in the, in, you know, in, the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the f weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying, like, abusing it, but it used to run around, it used to play out till, like, ten at night. Yeah. Uh, it used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit- <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. No. <laughs> Chase cars! Right? What sort of pig chases cars? <laughs> oh god! Now, was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch sticks? <laughs> it's Liam it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. <laughs> it's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> And chasing cars on that, and it became an ugly kid. 
<laughs> it's definitely Liam Gallagher. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can, uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you're brought up. Brilliant. Wow. Wow. <laughs> life. Wow. That was a hell of a point. Oh, God. <laughs> but am I right? Oh, you're always right, Carl. Carl Pilkington, good afternoon. Alright, what's, what's going on? You alright, mate? Yeah, yeah. I just start, you know, I'm grouting. Up a ladder, phone keeps ringing, eight, eight missed calls. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, it must be important, someone died or something. But hold on, though. fella saying, come on the radio. I don't I understand. I on the radio all week to plug the DVD, which is out now, in early abroad. Nobody was interested. <laughs> Suddenly you're on, you say call him up, but everyone's got to start panicking, getting me on the air. What? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you still grouting? You've been grouting all week. I mean, it must be. Are you doing a shoddy job or are you doing going over things? I don't understand. They're little small tiles, aren't they? It takes ages. But Carl. You no, know, you've never done it in your life. No, I you? don't. No, because my time is. I get paid more than a tiler, so it'd be mad for me to spend yeah. my time tiling. I wouldn't be saving That's money. Right. I'd be losing money. <laughs> so right. you earn more than a tiler. Well, so, no, I don't. I, not, not at the moment. Nothing's, nothing's happening, is it? Nothing's rolling in at the moment. Your DVDs are. Work is coming in. Your DVDs at number five in the charts. Yeah, but, hey, Richard, you don't see that money for ages, mate. <laughs> Honestly. Nothing happens. He's so annoyed. He was annoyed, right? We've just got an animation on in uh, uh, America, Canada, um, uh, Scandinavia, Australia, right? Channel Four, right? Being a uh, second series being made. Yeah. All those. Yeah. He's Amazing. going. He's going. When are we getting paid? When are we getting paid? He, he thinks it's going to come every week in a little brown envelope with gum on it. No, it well, doesn't. I don't, it... I don't know how long I'm going to be around for. And anything else, like you say, if I was a tiler, I'd do the tiling, and then the person would pay me. Right. But in this line of work, everyone's oh, it's not quite ready yet. The money's in a pot. Where's the pot? Where's the money? <laughs> What's, uh, it, it just annoys me because someone right. could buy it. Carl, who's, who's Carl, buying this off, Carl. And I, that was a, that was a, a metaphor. There's no real pot. When they said, "Oh, it's got to go in the pot," they meant all those DVDs. They go in there and they feel what the profit is, and then we get a profit share. Most people don't get a profit share. You have walked into this job under the wing of me and Steve Merchant. You should be so lucky. You've had the easiest ride of anyone in entertainment ever in the history of the world. Oh, it's not good though. Everyone keeps going. Oh, you must be a millionaire. No, I'm not, because the money's split. So many hands are out. Every job I do, Ricky and Steve weren't away with me when I was abroad, yet they get a big bib of it. They've got their hand out. Their agents have got their hands out. I am not a millionaire, so let's get that out there. I'm skint at the moment. No money's coming in. I've just been on the phone then. The reason I didn't answer one of the eight calls that I've just had is because I was on the phone to the electric people, giving them a meter reading. They all want paying on time. I can't, I can't just tell them, oh, the money's in the pot. The tax man. The money's in the pot. You can have it when I get the pot. I don't know when I'm getting paid. That's how it works. I'm sick of it. <sighs> Good, well, thanks very much, Carl. Yeah, thank well, you, Carl. Carl, what, what room are you grouting? Just in the kitchen. It's in the kitchen, right, OK. But what yeah. are you... Is it all, all tiled? It must be like being well, inside a bath. Well, there's one wall that there was tiles up. I pulled some off, the wall underneath was damaged, so I thought, right, I, I best not pull them all off, but what I'll do, I'll get my Dremel out, I'll take out what? all the... You what? You what? You what? The Dremel, the Dremel, it's like a tool that you use for getting the grout out. Right. Take out all the grout, Put new grout in, they look as good as new. Thanks, Anyway, Carl. time for the news. Does <laughs> <laughs> Carl look like you're enthusiastic? This oh, is The yeah. Guardian. This oh, yeah. is where it all started for us. We did the record record of us with The Guardian. It went on to become the biggest oh, download. Oh, oh, oh. 205 million downloads so far. And now it's being made into animation with HBO, probably oh. the greatest channel in the world. And Channel 4. Also a channel. <laughs> yeah. So, Carl, a little bit of decorum. Yeah? Excited to be here? Yeah, it's just we're doing a full day of this and it just gets a little bit wearing. Well, hang on, but this is... Well, don't, the, you don't say the, that, because they, they want to they no, think... No, but it's better to tell them well, why. this is an exclusive. Yeah. Hmm. I, I don't know, it's, it's everywhere. People get sick of hearing about it. That's what happens, isn't it? Mm. I mean, you're, you know, you crop up everywhere every time something comes out. It's like, oh, what's he flogging now? That's the problem. And that's People a friend. Going, <laughs> that's know, a but friend. It, but that's how it comes across, isn't it? It's like, here we go again, flogging something. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, our bit of work's been done here. Right. I don't know why we have to sit and explain to people. So you just like people to just buy our products, no questions asked, just buy it, give us the money. If and... you want, but what I'm saying is the people who have made the DVD, when do they get involved? 
when do they get off their arse and do something <laughs> for us? Instead of us sat here having to flog it. It comes across cheap. I hate it. But they don't. But the, but the people looking at this don't want to see the fellow does the accounts for HBO. Do but they? They, they but this, is, this is a nice symbiotic relationship with The Guardian. The Guardian yeah, said, yeah, we're... Guardian. we're Guardian. These are nice people. I'm don't so, you want people to see this? Aren't you proud of it? Um, it's not the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> What's the What's best the thing, thing you've ever done? done? Your um, fucking paper round. Because no, that's the only two things you've done so far in life. You had a paper round, then you had this, then you met us. I just feel like... This. Is there a DVD of the paper round coming out soon? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see that. He reckons that's the best job he's ever had. He said I was my own boss. No, you weren't. No, but it's the best job that I did as well. I felt confident in it. If people said, what do you do, and I do a paper round, I reckon all my customers would have been like, it's bloody good as well. Always the right paper, didn't rip it in a letterbox. Yeah. I was good at it. This this shouldn't have happened. This is all an accident. You right. said, oh, HBO are animating it. I said, great, how much? And you go, oh, well, don't worry about that. You know, I still don't know to this day what I'm meant to be getting out of it. Um, the drawing, you sort of... All I heard you say to him is, make his head rounder. <laughs> I've, had no, I've had no input into it at all. It's just... Um, <laughs> What do you think of the roundness of the head? What's your opinion of Carl? Well, same same shape as yours. Yeah, it's a perfectly admirable head. I'd be um, proud to have that head, and apparently I do. And so. have you seen the um, animation? Yeah. What do you think? I thought you looked a bit like Fred Flintstone. Well, yeah, a bit Fred, a bit Barney. But that's what mm. we said. We wanted it sort of Hanna Barbera, that sort of, you know, cuddly retro look. Because the things he says on the podcast, if you add to that a nasty, scary cartoon, it's going to be over the top. What would be a nasty, scary cartoon? Like if you were all naked or something? Oh, no, just it? like spiky and, right. and trendy. And, and I think it had to be nice and cuddly, because he's a little funny little cuddly creature, isn't he? Mm. You know, it's just like a lovely little, little round-headed... He's got a heart of gold, really. The sun love it. They say it's good. The mirror says it's genius. Seth MacFarlane, creator of The Family Guy, says it's the best animation he's ever seen. Mm. I don't like comments like that. Builds it up too much. It's just... Um... <laughs> It's me saying stuff that I would have. I think I would have made more of an effort if I'd have known that it was going to end up on the telly. Mm. It's like when I was talking about stuff to these two, I'd be saying about the problems my auntie Nora's having, stuff like that, thinking, well, she hasn't got the internet, she's never going to hear this. Then suddenly, oof, it's on the telly, you know, and she doesn't go out much, so she watches a lot of the telly, and then she's going to be flicking about one night going, oh, that sounds like Carl, oh, wow, this is good, what's, what's Carl saying here? Just turn it up a minute, turn it up. And I'm talking about her having a wind problem. And it's a little bit... What like, happened with her wind problem? Well, she's still kind of got it, she's on a lot of tablets and stuff, and it's just sort of playing havoc with her, um, with her, with her insides. But has Auntie Nora seen it? Have you heard back from her? Um, no, a relation told her that uh, she's been talked about. Right. She doesn't know what about. Um, so are you censoring yourself now that you're more of a media figure? For telly stuff, yeah, because it's proper, isn't it? As soon as something gets on the telly, well, it takes Guardian, it up a level. Guardian online. Well, it's still internet. It's still... I like that. I like the way it's just people... The only people who will be watching this are people who want to watch it. You don't get any whinges. There's no one going on there. Are you sh closing off the comments on these things? Because that's no, annoying. No, we'll open those up. Do, I'd close them. Because it's just people getting involved. If you don't like it, don't watch it. I don't understand that. I don't understand this whinging this. There's loads of things I don't like in life, but I don't stand around saying, don't buy them. You know? Well, you do. I'll buy the DVD for one. No, but I'm just talking about stuff that I'm not a big fan of. Yeah. You know? Um, Which is everything, really, isn't it? But, you know, you're excited by the fact that someone puts it on, they watch episode one, they're like... Bam. We've got a second series that's being made now. That's going on HBO Channel Four. It's being sold around the rest of the world. Have you been convinced that this is a good product to buy yet, or not? Um, it's, if you're into buying, you see, I don't buy DVDs. I'm not of that market. Um, I sort of wait until it's on the telly, and this has already been on the telly. Um, so if you really liked it and you want to remember it, buy the DVDs. That. And there's loads of extras on there, like for well, things and seen footage and. All that sort of stuff. It's 13 episodes, Carl, for the, for the money. You know, it's a lovely little collector's item. Good for all the family, if they're over 15. Yeah. And a bit mental. Stephen, any thoughts on this new... I haven't seen it. You haven't seen, it. seen it, so I don't know. But um, I'm certainly looking forward to my free copy. I shall... Uh, it's not free copies, but you do get 30% discount. <laughs> Great, that's even better. So, um, it says it's genius, the Daily Mirror. 
yeah. um, the sun, so it's very funny. They say so the sun, the Daily Mirror, the Guardian. The Guardian could have given us a, a quote. Well, they probably didn't like it, did they? I don't know. They're probably going, oh, we started that. Yeah, yeah we should get a cut of that, shall we? Oh, here we go, another hand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah someone another else. In the, in the, in the Jesus join, Christ. join the club. You've got two houses at the podcast, Carl. Stop fucking whinging. <sighs> I mean, I, I, I'd say steal this from shops if you want. That seems a bit crazy. Well, no, they, they, we, we get paid. Will we? Yeah. Don't steal. I shouldn't say that, should we? Don't steal, don't do drugs, and flog. Well, I'm just on my way to meet a bloke called Kenny, who uh, he basically grew up in the slums, uh, turned his life around, made a load of money, and now he enjoys spending it. Well, the thing is, you start earning money, and it doesn't. I don't know. You, you can get a bit, get a bit daft with it, can't you? You don't know how money's going to affect you. If I won the lottery tomorrow, and I don't do it because it's, it's too hard, isn't it? It's impossible. But if I did, I do not know what would happen. I know there'd be arguments. I think winning a load of money would cause headaches at home because Suzanne would have. She, she'd be wanting holidays all the time, and I don't want to go away, do I? I'm never at home as it is. At the moment, I say we can't afford it, we can't afford to go away. If I win, like, two million quid on the lottery, I can't say we can't afford it. She's going, what are you on about? With one? What's the point in having the money if we're not spending it? It's like, yeah, but I'm knackered, I want to stay at home. We bought a nice house and we're never in it. Oh, I don't know how sick it is. Before you know it, you're falling out and, you know, you've ended up with some tart. Afternoon. I take it you're Kenny? Yeah. Hi, how are you, Carl? Hi, I'm all right, yeah. I'm very well, thank you. Maybe you should sit and check out my chair. Aren't they beautiful? What, what are these? Are these girlfriends or Yes, partners? girlfriends. All right. <laughs> this yeah, of course, I think you're burning I'm burning my head, yeah, getting a red head. <laughs> I'm also bald, that's why oh, I always right, right, you cover it, yeah. yeah. You need to enjoy the fine things in life, Carl. I used to drink a 100 rands bottle, which should be about 10 pounds. All right. This is 15,000 pounds. To get all this, you're not stupid. So I don't understand how you can be happy handing over 15,000 pounds for their drink. <laughs> you must also have something that you can be driven in when you want to relax. Sit in, please. Or maybe not that side. Let's go this side. Shit on my shoes. Just sit in there. Oh, is he going out? Oh, I climbed across. I suppose you don't do that. You don't see the queen do that, do you? <laughs> Carl, why do you want to sit on a steering wheel? Give your focus to the road when you can sit at the back, have somebody worrying about that, and you give the woman that you love attention. Get a taxi. But a cab does not have this comfort. No, I, I, honestly, cab, it is comfy, I'll give you that. Cab. It's really nice. Do you know what I'd stress out yes. now? I, if I was you, I'd be annoyed because I bought this really nice car. Right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't fit in your garage. No, because oh, it's it, hanging out the back. Maybe we go into the pool. I'll just uh, roll up my things, take my Good. shoes off. All right. Sit on the Ladies. edge. Yeah. I'm like a duck, me. I'm happy just getting my feet wet. Oh, it's cold. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, fucking hell. Is it cold? cold. Yeah! It's this scene now. Me sat here, women in a pool, champagne. Do you want this because you've seen it in a film, or is it what you want? No, this is what I want. Never been a fan of champagne. I told him I don't like it because it gives me heartburn. The other reason I don't like it is because you take the cork off, the cork's shot off, isn't it? What happens if I don't want it all? Pringles, they say once you pop, you can't stop. Well, they still give you a lid. The, car, uh, the car's have arrived. I mean, he's got two Porsches, he's got a Bentley, he's got that Rolls Royce, and he's looking at buying another one. I mean, he's got more cars than I've got shoes. I haven't driven it before. This is the first time that I'm test driving it. I believe you have one car. Maybe, all right, get two, have a van. A car and a van, in case you need to shift some things. Bloody hell, Kenny. Oh, forget it. That's the first time he'd seen that car. He's gone up there and back. He's going, yeah, I love it. <laughs> How fast is that? <laughs> That's 170. I spend longer than that when I'm, I'm buying a VAC. Something about buying a Dyson. They're not cheap. They're like the top VAC. So I looked them up. Different models. All that, looking at the reviews. Right, I've had enough. Seriously, fuck me. People were saying the handle on it wasn't very big to get your hand in. Does, that, does anyone else say that? Maybe it was just a bloke with big knuckles. <laughs> that, that is funny. 
I take time before I buy something. That's part of the enjoyment for me. <laughs> and I bought it, and I'm very happy with it. It comes with, like, a wall bracket, uh, it's wireless. Uh, you plug it in, you get 15 minutes before you have to plug it in again. That isn't great, but I've accepted it. You don't have to get anywhere that fast. Just leave the house earlier. I just want to show you where I come from and why I'm enjoying my money. He's got an incredible life. But, you know, look, look at today. He bought that McLaren. Did you, did you see any sort of excitement from him? If I'd bought something like that, I'd be, I'd be over the moon all afternoon. I'd want, to, I'd want to get rid of us so I can play out in it. But he was like that, he was like, next, let's move on to the next thing. He wanted to show me the township in helicopter, which is weird. Because it like, you could have just gone on Google Maps, looked at Street View. You don't need to go up in helicopter. But it's Kenny again, isn't it, taking it to that next level of don't do things the simple way. What's the most expensive, glamorous way of doing it? I don't mind the helicopter because you can land anywhere. A private jet can only land at the airport. Yeah, it's, it's not a dilemma I've had that. From here, we're going to fly to Cape Town. Uh, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Katie McKenzie, my business partner. We've got a very nice hotel for you so that you can taste this life. Even if you don't approve of it, taste it. You might just go back to England, a different person. So this is the main living area. Lewis over here is your butler. Literally anything you can think of, Lewis is your guy. You have a chef here. He'll prepare anything you want. You've got a wraparound balcony, so you've got 360-degree views of the whole of Cape Town. Good, isn't it? This is what having money is about. A bit of peace and quiet, good view. See, you get people at home who sit on their arse all the time and don't want to work. But then the funny thing is the people who work really hard, they work really hard so they can sit on their arse. It's just that you want to sit on your arse in a nicer surrounding. We all just want to sit on our arse. There's some guys who have popped in to see you. They're sent through from Kenny. Are you ready to look at some amazing watches? We have here one of our limited edition uh, models from Chopard, uh, together with the Miller Miller racing pins and cufflinks. Mm. See, I don't, I, don't, I don't wear watches you don't at wear all. Watches. I don't Why bother. don't you wear watches? Uh, just because I've got my phone and I really don't need cufflinks. I don't buy a shirt. If it don't come with buttons, I think it's cheeky that. <laughs> I think it's really cheeky. It's not a, a, it's not a finished yeah. shirt, is it? You've got to start buying buttons for it. You might as well leave the collar off, sell it in bits. Well, it's a personal preference. So I don't need... Um, we all... Uh, and a pen. A pen for me. I, I'll always have a pen. Uh, all the flights I do, I always take the free pens. So that, that does the job. It's a beautiful gift, let's say, that some for people appreciate. For some people, appreciate. that's fine, yeah. Yes. How much so, was that watch on its own without the pen? 99,000. And how much is this one? It's around 171,000 rand. It sort of annoys me a little bit that these people who are pay who's paying that for a watch. Well, you would be surprised. Uh, some people can actually appreciate um, the research, the studies, because uh, watchmaking is an art. It used to be. I mean, it's not hard now. We've got it men is. on the moon. Bleeding hell. The size <laughs> of that! How much is that one? Uh, it would be something stupid then, you know, no point asking. So thanks well, for coming. Bell's going. Maggie? So we should leave you yeah. something. Thank you very much. It was much. nice Cheers. to meet you. I'm ready now. Good luck telling them. Oh, excuse me, do you want me to undress you? No, no, you're all right. Oh, okay. No, honestly. Oh, OK, sure. I mean, this still is quite nice. What I've seen today, I've seen on billboards, you buy some of these men's magazines, that's all it is, isn't it? Advert after advert, some bloke in a pair of trunks with a watch on in the rain. It doesn't. I don't look at it and go, oh, one day. Can I just bring you yeah, some tea for you? Yeah, just there. Uh, some muck already. No, that's fine. That's ideal, eh? Okay, sure. Cheers. Lovely. Sure. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. It just goes to show, doesn't it? You can have so much money that you don't know what to do with it, and then you just end up buying crap. On Bond Street, there's some bags made out of ostrich stuff like that. It just surprised all the fuss that Noah went to, saving the animals two by two, and they're making handbag out of ostrich. He wasted his time, didn't he? Louis? Yes? Do you want a shoe off? No, I'm not off. I'm still around. 
No, 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 but you could go if you want. I haven't, I haven't got anything that I need to do in, honestly. You can, you can call it a day. OK, sure. Thank you very much. I, I, See you later, Lewis. You don't have a butler these days. I felt like I had to give him stuff, stuff to do because he's there and that's his job. But I've had nothing for him to do. At one point, I was thinking I'll send him out for a Twix. Batman. He's the only man who I sort of, I've seen with a butler and I thought, well, yeah, he probably needs one. He's always been called out, hasn't he? Sorting out problems. He hasn't got time to make sure he's got food in the fridge and everything. Other than that, I don't know what I've learned from this, really. All I know is I don't want anything really expensive. But I like the views, the natural views. I've got everything I need. A city view, sea, table mountain. That's, that's what's good about this. If we didn't have any windows, pretty horrible, wouldn't it? So I'm, I'm, I'm relying on nature. You can't beat nature, can you? And that doesn't cost anything. Nobody has hustling as a vocation, do they? I think it's what you do when times are tough, when things aren't quite working out and you need some money. This is where it all started. What, for, for you as uh, Kenny as well? For myself and Kenny. We started here by buying fish and selling the fish for more than we bought it eventually. And we're going to start, like, where we started. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I did a little bit of sort of buying and selling as a kid. Why don't you try to negotiate? How much did you pay? How much did you? 300. How about a little bit less? Because I'm only here for a few days. I've never been before, and I might come back on holiday and buy oh, some more fish. Yeah. How about a little bit less, though? Well, the price has started for today, so we keep it in minutes. I'm not making profit on you now. Oh, I don't know about this. Is there any other fish markets around here? Don't do that to me now. I've, I've got to go. I've got, I'm getting okay. a better deal. Oh, I was thinking 26. You really can't. Really? All right, I believe her eyes. Her eyes are good. Is it? Yeah. All right, well, let's pay the... Uh... This is 45. 45? 45. 45, and you can get 50 then for this. She's changing the rules, eh? Well, they the market. So, if you change, you change it. They've got out of negotiation. Right, well, hang on, you then. move with them. Look, I'll tell you what, I want, I want 40 quid's worth of fish. So, how much is that in rand? 400 rand. Right, I want... £400,000 worth of fish cut up. £400,000? £400,000 rand. No, you don't. <laughs> oh, what do I want? <laughs> not only that fish in the sea for £400,000. I ain't. I'm not... Yeah. Look, I said I'm a hustler. I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> tell you what, that's some weight. So do I have to carry this round with me? Yes. Most people think you need big money to have big beginnings. You know, when you saw that McLaren's yesterday and all those nice cars of Kenny, all started with this fish. At the end of the day, the way I look at sales is they either want a fish or they don't. Simple as that. People make out it's harder than it is. Snoop! Want some snoop? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Do you want some snoop? 85 a fish. 85 is one of this. It's a nice one. Look at that. No, it's too much. They look like a 20 oh, 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 oh. fish for me. I can sell you one for. For 80? No, I've got fish already. Do you want to buy Snook? No, man, but the borrow's ready. You get paid Friday? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, my back's killing me. You can't carry that, can you? Just a bit heavy on me, own. What's happening here? She knows the area. You employed her? Yes. Fresh Snook. Look at that. Please look at that. It's small. Bouncy for the children. He's got too much what for the children? Bounce, bounce. You're not supposed to get a small one. I didn't do it, it's another. You can go to the to get a small thing like that. Sick of this. It's not happening, is it? You... I can't make it cheaper. I paid 50. I paid 50 for a fish. I can't sell it cheaper than that. I know, but that's in the centre. You've got to get on a bus. How much is that going to cost? It's not cheaper. It won't be cheaper. You've got to get a bus there, you've got to get a bus back. Yeah, you have to make it cheaper. You have to be cheaper. I can't drop the price. It's not going to happen. The lowest I can do is 50. So if you want to buy one for 50, we can talk. It's making me feel like a right tit. That's hustling. Buying something for cheap, selling it for more. It's business, actually. It's not hustling, that's business, isn't it? That's, that's how you do business. Gayton, it's not happening. No one's got any money. They got paid last Friday or something. Uh, who's this? I don't know how Gayton managed it. You're probably scared of him. Look at the size of him. If he came knocking on your door and said, buy some fish, you'd buy some fish. When you talk, you scare people. I do. Selling is not only with your mouth. It is with your body. It is with your attitude. It is how you move. 
it wouldn't work at home. There's no way in this world you'd be allowed to just earn money just like that. There's always someone there now with a clipboard. Ever since clipboards have come out, that's, that's created hassle, hasn't it? Anyone with a clipboard, it's, it's never good news. Will she buy them back off me at the market? Never. 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 <laughs> that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever, I've ever had to ask to say, will you buy back my stuff? <laughs> Never. You're not going to get any sort of entrepreneurs, what's it called, entrepreneurs. It's not going to happen at home. There's too much hassle. You try and you've got someone there slapping your ass. Get back down again. Who do you think you are? That's why they have to go on the Dragon's Den. The Dragon's Den wasn't around years ago. You could just get on with it. But now you can't do anything unless you've got Duncan Ballantyne. I was rubbish. I know I wasn't very good. No, no, you were rubbish, no? But I never want you to forget one thing. You might have been rubbish, but you're still better than the guy that sat at home and did nothing. Because trying is better than not trying at all. See you tonight. All right. Thank you. Good one. Cheers, man. See you later on. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it is better than not trying, really. Because I'm actually out of pocket. Yeah. It's a nice sort of fable that he came up with there, but it's definitely not better than staying at home. And I've got a load of old fish I've got to get shut of. Do you want a free fish? Yeah, it's annoying, because I'm in this place, which I really like. Five grand a night, I've hardly been here. I'm flogging fish all day, that's why I'm washing my hands, I stink. Used to be a girl at school called Tracy, she worked in a chippy, she always stunk fish. It's bad, that, isn't it? When you you, that's, that's when your job really is sort of taking over your life, isn't it? Hey, Carl, I've got my blood. Yeah, all right. Come with me. Come with me, I've got a surprise for you. Is it? Don't you like this? What's all this about? Very beautiful lady, eh? This is the jacket I wore the first time I ate sushi. You can take it from the pussy, yeah. or from the breasts, or from the stomach, wherever you choose. Right. No hands. This is how you do it. Right. Yeah. I, honestly, I'm all right. I can get no, I can pick you, you up. No, 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 no. Well, no, no Carl. What's it all about? You what can't eat like that. You can't eat like that. No, I don't want to eat off a yeah. woman. I don't, I don't even know her name. Oh, you don't know her name. What's it? What's your name? Pam. Pam. Very Pam. nice to meet you. Not Pam. 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 Don't don't be offended. She's I just offended. don't want to be. She's, she's not offended. offended. She well, let me get to know her a bit first. Ask if I'm going to eat Ask food off a tit, let me get to know her. I mean, is that what it's come to? Look how, look how I struggle today, flogging fish. Look how difficult it Look what you've got to do to get people to have fish. One bite. Maybe later. No, we have to do it now. Why? What, what's the rush? It's getting hot in here. Well, that's why fish. it should be in a fridge. One bite won't kill you. It's not about killing me, I just don't like sushi. OK, kiss it. OK, kiss it. I don't want to kiss fish. What sort of night is this? I thought it was a classy joint. 12 hours on a plane. Over 5,000 miles all this way, and you've got me licking fish. No, it's not. I don't, I don't want to do it. Any perks? Do you get to take home what hasn't been eaten, or...? <laughs> don't laugh, you're going to lose a bit. It is weird how it's sort of come to that. I don't know if it's because there's now too many people in the world, and... They've just got to come up with more and more jobs because of the population. It's just mental, isn't it? That's why you've got women lying down, food all over them. Or you can eat Buffy, because all the normal jobs are being taken up. The National Lottery on the telly. Like, three people to select six balls. So unnecessary. You've got a bloke there with a clipboard, a fellow with a white glove, and a bloke to hit the button on the machine. Three people to select six numbers. The world's gone mental. In terms of vocation and different jobs in the world, it's a job. Sort of better than sitting on your ass, but she is sitting on her ass, but she's being paid for it. And that's what I said at the start of the day. And that's what we all want, really, isn't it? I just didn't want to lick the fish. Is it a good earner? Yeah. And what are the hours like? Well, it depends. Any perks? Do you get to take home what hasn't been eaten, or...? <laughs> Don't laugh, you're going to lose a bit. It is weird how it's sort of come to that. I don't know if it's because there's now too many people in the world, and they've just got to come up with more and more jobs because of the population. It's just mental, isn't it? That's why you've got women lying down, food all over them. Or you can eat Buffy, 
because all the normal jobs are being taken up. 